the moment that we've all been waiting for. It's a pleasure to introduce two gentlemen and superstars who will present an overview of our communities. <laughs> they will give their presentation and then we will open a question and answer period at the end. I'd like to introduce Drew Irwin and Bob Kiley. Drew has a BA in chemistry from William Jewell College and a master's degree in public policy administration from the University of Missouri. He began his municipal career in 1998 in the city of Clayton, Missouri, before coming to the Chicago area to serve as assistant village administrator of Lamont, Illinois, and then village manager for the village of Bannockburn. Officially, he began his current role as administrator for the village of Lake Bluff in January of 2008 and is now embarking on his fifth year with the village. Bob is city manager, has been city manager of Lake Forest since 1990. He received his BA in political science and urban studies from Lake Forest College and a master's degree in public administration from the University of Kansas. Bob began his public service career in 1980 and became Lake Forest city manager in 1990. During the past 23 years as the city's key administrator, Bob has worked with 12 mayors and numerous city councils. Bob serves as treasurer of the Northwest Municipal Conference. He's chairman of the Illinois Municipal League Legislative Committee and was nominated by the International City County Management Association to be the Midwest Vice President nominee for 2011 to 2013. I welcome both Drew and Bob. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm sure you all agree with me that uh, Scott does not look 110 years old. <laughs> you still look good. Congratulations, Scott. Um, every year, Drew and I really look forward to coming before you and giving you an update as to what's going on in the city and the village and uh, looking ahead as to what we see as some of the issues in 2013, Joanne. Uh, as we go forward. And this year we have titled our uh, presentation The New Normal 3.0 Special Places, Special Spaces because I think both of us agree that our communities are first and foremost residential communities. And I think Scott was, uh, took the words right out of our mouth in terms of these special places are also because of the special people, the special businesses, and the special spaces that each of you are also responsible for in making uh, in our communities and making them such a wonderful place for people to live and work and play. So we're going to talk a little about uh, some themes that we talked about a couple of years ago because we think that they are still really relevant today. For those of you that uh, don't recall a few years ago when we uh, spoke before you we talked about the surviving the new normal and the fact that uh, to survive in these very uncertain economic times, that businesses were going to have to have successful customer experiences, respond to changing demographics, promote opportunities to listen to consumers, and also use, and most importantly, I think we pointed out, was use the new tools and technologies to really get focused response on what your customers were looking for. Uh, fortunately, a number of you listened to us, and you're still here today. For those that didn't, and they're not here, we're sorry. There's a few empty seats. There are a few empty seats, that's right. So, we're going to do something a little different here today. And uh, if you look on your table, there's a sheet of paper like this. We're doing a little pop quiz. Drew and I have always wanted to do this, you know, the professors. Kathy O'Hara, you'll appreciate this. We're doing a little pop quiz first thing in the morning. Wake everybody up. And uh, we have a few questions that we had asked for you to um, give your answers, please. Don't cheat. Don't look off your neighbor's paper. We want your answers. And so, Drew, if you want to walk them through the questions. Thank you. Yes, please. All right. Question number one. Do you think the economy, uh, the economy will rebound to what it was before the current economic crisis? Yes, no, not sure. So think about it. I'll give you some time. <laughs> oh. 
Hey, don't make these too complicated, all right? It is 8.30 in the morning. All right. All right, next question, number two. How many new businesses have opened in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff in 2012? I think about 2012, pretty interesting year, both Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. Um, some of the things come to mind, I, this is a fun part of this program when Bob and I work together to prepare this. We get to you know, look back and reminisce on what occurred. 2012 in Lake Bluff, pretty interesting. Um, Coastal Living Magazine declared Lake Bluff the fourth happiest seaside community. <laughs> really nice, right? Yeah. We weren't allowed to stand on the uh, podium stand, you know, that's for the... That's right. Gold, silver, and bronze, but you know, fourth place, we're fighting hard and scratching our way to the top. Also in 2012, uh, I think Lake Bluff, I'm sorry, Lake Forest opened up your uh, business incubator. Mm -hmm. I think you have at least, uh, what, 20 businesses associated with that today. That's a great accomplishment. Um, Lake Bluff also had its first ever professional cycling race in the downtown. It was a great event. Um, Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital is uh, going to sponsor that again this year, which is July 20th. I think Lake Forest has got a race or a cycling event as well immediately following that. I think the 28th, the uh, Venus de Miles. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, 2012, it's, it's, it was a great year, and I think 2013 will be uh, equally as exciting. All right, next question. Vacancy rates. What are the vacancy rates in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff? Now, you can think about this in two different ways, you can, and we'll accept both answers, but you can combine the percentages, which you believe to be true, or you can just look at them independently and think about Lake Bluff and Lake Forest. And again here, think about your answer in terms of the central business districts. All right, next question, number four. Has the mobile market changed the way people shop? Yes, no, not sure. If you paid attention in the last few years, I think you already know the answer to this. And our final question. What is this? And it's a hint, this is not the new chamber office. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses? Don't yell out loud, we'll give you the That's answers right. later on, don't worry. We'll see who's been staying up on current events because this was an article in Tribune uh, newspapers, so. All right, Ed, we'll go to the uh, The answer key. All right, ready? Here we, go. Here we go. Question number one. Do you think the economy will rebound? All right, let me see a show of hands. Let me say yes. Okay. Pretty good number. How many say no? Mm. Mm. How many say, I don't know, and why are you asking me a question this early in the morning? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, next slide. Uh, Fortune Magazine actually did a survey, uh, and they published this in December of 12. And you'll see, actually, it's pretty much broken down a third, a third, a third, right? I have to tell you that uh, I personally am in that no, not sure category. There are certainly some signs. Uh, we were talking at our table earlier about real estate, and some things are picking up in the real estate market. <laughs> Uh, interestingly, and, and I'm sure Scott and the others can attest to this, that the number of sales are picking up. Unfortunately, they're for less money, uh, so my real estate transfer tax isn't making as much money, so if you guys could do something about that, I'd appreciate it. Um, but I think what concerns me, and I think he knew I was going to talk about this, and that's why he left earlier, Scott Drury, is that um, I think what concerns me, and I'm sure Drew as well, is still what's going to happen at the federal and state government and the drain or the, the drag that it's going to have potentially on the economy going forward in 12. So certainly from the City of Lake Forest standpoint, we are going into this with the assumption that, 12, or that 13 is not going to be any better than 12, and we are planning accordingly. We are still being very conservative in our fiscal matters and uh, watching every penny that we have because we're just not sure what's going to happen, nor do we think that we will ever get back to the 2005 time. If it does, you know what, that's great and we'll all be happy and uh, we'll start doing a lot of things that Drew and I enjoyed doing for so many years because believe me, it's a lot nicer to be expanding and building and doing those things than cutting back and telling people, no, sorry, we can't do these things. Yeah, and just as Bob stated, um, 
interestingly, through this economic downturn, if you look, when we came back and when we were talking to you in 2010, the priorities for both the city of Lake Forest and the village of Lake Bluff really focused on economic vitality, I can't say it, fiscal stewardship and <laughs> capital improvements. Looking forward in 2013 really hasn't changed a lot. You know, what, what really has changed is a little bit, uh, while we are focusing on still completing capital improvements, um, the, probably the only tweak uh, to our resources and energies kind of goes towards building community character and branding. Um, but essentially, fiscal stewardship has been, you know, the, the backbone of both of our organizations for the last few years. Just like Bob said, Lake Bluff has taken, continued its conservative fiscal approach, assuming the worst, um, which has served the community well. Both communities have maintained our AAA ratings, um, and which is very important. Um, helps us do our business better, help us serve our residents better. Um, economic vi vitality, keep having a problem with that word. <laughs> Um, that has different, you know, that means a lot of different things to different people for the village of Lake Bluff. We've looked at this in a different, I, I will talk about it in the near term and far term. You know, near term, we look at sales tax revenue, how well is the community doing? You know, 70% of our sales tax is auto related. So, um, which probably doesn't surprise anybody with canals and the Chevrolet Exchange and Lake Forest sports cars. So, um, so that's a, it's an elastic source of revenue for the village to rely upon. So it stretches and then it snaps back. Um, so we, it, it, it forces us to be even more conservative because it's an unreliable source and very difficult to predict. And it continues to be somewhat of a roller coaster, although it is ticked up a little bit, but it, it, it continues to roll up and down. So the vicissitudes of the marketplace are reflected in that sales tax number for us. Another indicator is uh, for us is um, we look at building permits and development related fees. Obviously, things are, are moving slow. Um, there is some activity that we're uh, excited about. Uh, Stonebridge, um, that development's back in front of the community. Um, it, it seems to be there's a plan that's uh, continued to evolve. And, and if you're interested in that project, I suggest you pay attention. Um, in the coming months, I, I expect the Roanoke Group will be back in front of the village uh, come March to uh, present a modified plan. Um, Another indicator we believe is uh, the uh, former Shepherd Chevrolet property in the community is um, in the Waukegan Road corridor area of the village, which is essentially um, banded on the north by 176, on the west by uh, 43 or Waukegan Road, and on the south, um, our, our southern border with Lake Forest, and on the east with uh, Route 41. That geographic area in the community actually represents 57% 50, of the sales tax for the village and a, almost half of our total revenue system coming into the village. So a very important area that we've been studying for several years now and trying to modify that regulatory environment to help benefit the village. Um, so that's, that's another area that we've been focusing on for economic vitality. Um, I th the good news with that is the Shepherd Chevrolet property is under contract with a uh, local development company out of Buffalo Grove, Oxford Development. So the village is watching for that to continue to move through the process and we would expect some, maybe some activity on that this this calendar year. Um, branding, uh, hopefully everybody knows about our branding program and on the table in front of you, some literature about that. Um, please pick that up. Um, for all the Lake Bluffers in the room, if you have not yet filled out uh, a survey regarding the community branding program, there's some directions on how to do that on the literature in front of you. So it's as simple as going to the village's uh, website, lakebluff.org. We have started this project end of last quarter in 2012. The village is looking to um, build a branding strategy to cross-functionally market the village to drive business, sales tax, uh, both <coughs> residential and commercial relocation, uh, as well as general consumer perceptions about Lake Bluff. It's been a really interesting process. One of the things that we've learned, we're, we're still going through this information collection stage, is we've been looking, getting the perceptions of the community from the inside and they're also getting it from the outside looking in on Lake Bluff. One of the things that we've tried to do, and Bob and I have talked about this in years past, is getting good analytics and monitoring your information as businesses out there because we found out through this process, our, our firm who's reached out to some of you business people and said, hey, tell us about your customers. Where are they coming from? Um, and the information has been very bad. I hate to say that. But a lot of the businesses don't really track their customer base, um, for better or worse, mostly for worse for us. But um, that's one of the things that we talk about, and you'll hear more about, about monitoring your analytics so, to know your customer base. Um, building community character, uh, Lake Bluff is a strong history of a, a number of special events that make Lake Bluff a great place. We have a lot of very interesting places, and we'll get into that more. I'll turn it over to Bob. 
to piggyback on some things that Drew was saying. If you go on the city's website, the uh, issues set forth uh, from our strategic plan are laid out there, including economic vitality and the uh, fiscal stewardship and the community character and so forth. We spent 2012 taking a look at what we thought were those strategic issues going forward. And uh, if you look at that, there's a lot of talk about who we are as a community and really trying to get back to when you, when you think about Lake Forest and Lake Bluff, we started as an educational institution with the college being here first, but quickly grew into a residential community and the business community was really there to support the residential community. And so we want to make sure that we go back to our, our core purpose, our core business. And I, so if you take a look at that, and I think Susan Kelsey and some of her research, you even see that the businesses survive primarily based on Lake Forest, Lake uh, Bluff residents. And so we want to make sure that the two are working very well together and more importantly, that we never lose sight of who we are and how important uh, both educational component is in our history and our traditions here in Lake Forest, but also just the general character of our community and the services that we provide and so forth. And so I'd encourage you, if you have a moment, to go on the website. I will mention that uh, we're doing some things in terms of community character and reaching out to people. Uh, our website is going is in the process of being completely redone, and uh, come this spring, hopefully the May June time frame, we will completely launch a new website that will hopefully be much more robust and dynamic and easier to use uh, than the current site is. Uh, the other thing I would mention too is that uh, we've got some exciting things happening in 2013 on your table. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a little more detail later on, is the BMW Championship that will be uh, held at Conway Farms Golf Club in uh, September of this year. And, um, and along those lines, we're doing some things to sort of spruce ourselves up since we're going to have uh, a significant number. I'm not going to tell you because it's going to be a question you're going to be asked here shortly. But there's going to be a lot of people coming to town. And so we want to make sure we put on our sort of best face. And so there's some things that we're going to be doing in the community. Probably one of the most uh, significant or noteworthy projects that's going to happen is uh, down at our beachfront uh, and Forest Park. I know many of you have been following that in the uh, news over the last couple of years. And uh, we're hoping to begin work on Forest Park, the uh, rehabilitation and restoration of Forest Park. Uh, I know in the back of the room we have a couple of uh, of members of the Forest Park Board. Uh, they're uh, about ready to begin their uh, fundraising campaign. And so if any of you brought your checkbooks with you, I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, but uh, there's going to be a number of those kinds of projects that are going to go around town to just sort of spruce things up and sort of restore the character of what we all remember as a very special place. All right. Back to the quiz. So we asked you, how many new businesses open in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff in 2012? All right, how many of you think the answer is E? Boy, no optimists. You guys are brilliant. That's right. <laughs> All right, how many of you think the answer is A? Okay. A real pessimist, thanks. All right, and it's actually pretty interesting how it's distributed. Uh, I think 13 were in Lake Forest and 12 were in Lake Bluff. Actually, we had 20. Oh, I'm sorry. 20 of those are at Lake Forest. Uh, 20 of the 25? Yeah, because correct me if I'm wrong. You're Then both of our maths are wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Susan, you can correct us. It was 13 and 12 because some oh. are still opening this year. Ah, OK. Thank you very much. <laughs> we do have a few before our boards and commissions right now, yeah. don't we? Yeah, OK. Well, Uh, how many were lost in that time? Well, if you go to the next slide, actually, uh, you'll see the breakdown uh, between lead, 2009 and 2013. And uh, you'll see that generally for both communities, the uh, percentages didn't change. Uh, Lake Bluff is still pretty much 70 uh, non-retail, 30% uh, retail use, Lake Forest being 60-40 there. But you can sort of see where the new businesses came from 
And part of the, the reason the numbers don't work with what you just heard was obviously some have moved out since the 2009 and some others have moved in uh, during that period of time. But generally, you know, things are on the, uh, the trend up. Drew and I have chatted about the fact that it's sort of um, maybe human nature that we always uh, look at what are those stores that are not there versus the ones that are there. And uh, I would hope that because we have a lot of new stores in town, that people do get out and visit the new stores, uh, visit the new restaurants, uh, visit the new businesses that are in there, uh, because they uh, are becoming very important components of our business districts. Next slide, Ed. All right, we talked about vacancy rates. This is interesting, you know, does, does reality match perception? <laughs> That's right. So how many got this right? They are right. Yeah. I mean, isn't that, uh, now I, I won't put anybody on the spot, but I'm guessing most of you thought vacancy rates were much higher, didn't you? Yeah. And I think that that's goes to our point that Drew and I talk about. You know, you can look at uh, the old Pasquese site on Waukegan Road. You can look at the mobile station across the street here. I mean, there's a couple of very visible sites that make us think that uh, the numbers are very different than what reality is, and I'm sure the same yeah. in Lake Bluff. Yeah, and, and it, it's, you know, in Lake Bluff, good news, bad news, we have a very small, compact central business district. So when there's a vacancy, it's really reflected, and it shows, but the good news is, for the last several years, years and even through this economic downturn, we've had a really excellent uh, low vacancy rate. Um, go to the next slide. And when you look at this, um, the comparison, the transition um, over the last few years, it's not that significant. Both communities have been well under 10%. But I mean, I think the perception is certainly nationwide, uh, you're not going to see numbers like this. Most communities are in much more desperate situations than ours. So it's very fortunate. So thanks to many of you and your uh, purchases and uh, as well as your efforts and investments as business owners in keeping this, this number low for both of us. And I mean, I mean, the reality is, you know, there's been a lot of talk on television. If you look at this and you look at the success of this, you have to question, you know, did Drew and Bob do this without performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> and we both vehemently deny. That's right. So I'm going on Oprah uh, <laughs> next week. Yeah. yeah. And see, I think that's what happens is that we get yeah. used to a business being in a certain location and it moves. You know, that's what I still have people ask me, where did Helanders go? You know, and so I sometimes will walk them a block north and say, here it is. <laughs> um, but I think we get those perceptions about what's happening in our downtowns, and we lose sight of the bigger picture and really the, the vibrancy that's going on. And, you know, I have to personally give a lot of credit to Susan Kelsey because she's been working very hard to bring these businesses in. And I've said this before, is that whether it's the village or the city, we only have a certain amount of control. We don't own these properties. And I know Susan has brought multiple prospective tenants to the owners of these property but ultimately it's the owners have to decide what they want to do with their property. And those that have been willing to work with Susan have found tenants for their spaces. Those that have been a little more difficult, their spaces tend to stay vacant a little longer. So we'll continue to work those routes because there is a lot of interest. Susan will be the first one to tell you there's a lot of interest. We've probably got 10 to 15 leads that we're working on right now. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is, is that we can't force the individual. We try to make the introduction and hopefully nudge the two parties along to make a deal. But more times than not, we have to step back and ultimately it's going to be the property owner that's going to make that decision. All right. Um, staying on. Okay. Uh, has the mobile market changed the way people shop? Let me see a show of hands. How many said yes? Oh, you are wonderful. <laughs> You paid attention three years ago when we talked. You are absolutely correct. For those of you that said no, you're either old uh, or you're about ready to go out of business. Um, so the next slide, Ed. A um, couple of things. Um, and this is interesting when it comes from Motorola Solutions. If you talk about 75% of, of U.S. retailers are believing that this is having a huge impact. And I'll just tell you a quick story. Um, I was, you all know, I hate the shop. But I was with my wife, and we were down at uh, Target over the Christmas season. And 
I'm in line, and a woman is standing there with her mobile phone, her smartphone. I should ask that. How many people have smartphones? Yeah, see, that's an indication of why we do more and more of this. Because this woman had her smartphone and said, I want to buy this camera. Uh, you have it for X dollars. Amazon has it for Y dollars. And Target's policy is you will match Amazon's price. And the woman said, you're absolutely right, and rang it up at the Amazon price. Yeah, wow is right. Um, and Target had to do that over the holiday season to remain competitive because they are feeling the pinch from the Amazon.coms and so forth. And I think they adopted that policy year round now. Yeah. And so that's just one personal experience I've had. I'm sure many of you have had others. Uh, I've been with my daughter. My daughter is a very sophisticated shopper. I know from my credit card bills. I see it <laughs> monthly. Um, but she uh, is she's shopping on her phone all the time, pricing things uh, as to, you know what, I can get this cheaper somewhere else. Or I can get something very similar somewhere else. Or so-and-so has a coupon, let's go here and uh, have lunch. So there's that group that's out there, and it's very powerful. And as we said three years ago, and I'd reinforce it today, it's changing all of the way we do business. And it's not just retail. Uh, it's banking, it's real estate, it's, it's everything. I mean, uh, Scott or, or Debbie can probably tell you the number of people who now, their, their inquiries start on, online, don't they? Uh, they show up and they say, here, I saw these five houses. These are the ones I want to look at. And so it's really changed the whole business, uh, the commercial business that we're all dealing with. This is more of the same. I mean, really, this is probably shouldn't be a shocker, but it's a very big number. I mean, think about what Bob was just explaining, and that $689 billion in retail store sales by 2016. I mean, that's, that's three years away, 36 months. So one of the things we've talked about uh, for the last few years, change, modify what you're, how you're doing your business to accept, and respond, and embrace the new technology. All right, so did anybody know what this was? No? All right, I'll give you a hint. It's in Martinsburg, West Virginia. It is a new Macy's Fulfillment Center. So if you thought that Macy's was only bricks and mortar, you are wrong. Macy's realizes they need to have an online uh, capability. And this facility, to give you some context of how large it is, is 43 football fields big. And in one day, over the holiday season, they were filling 60,000 orders a day. And they expect within two years to be doing 180,000 orders a day. And this is just one fulfillment center. Amazon has 40 of these spread across the country and is going to open seven more in 2013. Now here's what's even more amazing is um, the fact that Macy's and others are now looking at the way they do business and it isn't just all now I'm bricks and mortar or I'm all online. It is a, a marriage, if you will, of these businesses. They recognize that their customers, some still like to come into the store, some like to touch and feel things, others like to just go right online. But the interesting thing is, is that you take a Walmart. I can go online at Walmart. I can order something, and the Walmart store in Vernon Hills will deliver it. That's what the model is that they're moving to. I have a, a friend who works for the uh, U.S. Postal Service. The U.S. Postal Service is having conversations with some of these businesses that they will s provide same-day delivery. Actually, it's smart for the U.S. Postal Service because there's been some talk about whether they'll even be in business in the next couple of years. They're looking at their business model and saying, can we partner with somebody and do same-day delivery? Because that was the trouble, if you will, that Amazon had in their business model is that people, I want it now, and it might take 48, 72 hours to get there. Well, they're trying to speed that up and uh, be much more effective that way. And so now you're starting to see the blurring of the lines between the brick and mortar companies and the online companies, which are um, interesting from what the impact is going to be on all of us, because 
for Drew and I, it's also very interesting as you start then talking about sales tax dollars and how do you account for them. And if I'm a Lake Forest resident and I go online and I buy something from Target and it's delivered to my house, who gets the sales tax? Uh, does Highland Park, does Vernon Hills, does Lake Forest? And so it can really change the whole uh, landscape here over the next couple of years. And, and carrying on that same point, it's, uh, as Bob said, this uh, unique involvement of bricks and mortar and the uh, e-commerce world and how that's um, evolving daily. And even you know the, the professionals, Harvard Business Review, and you look at them, you can't predict where this is coming from, where it's going. Um, other than that, the experiences are blurring, which puts a great emphasis and need for local businesses to really optimize their ex the shopping experience, the service experience, so that you can differentiate yourself and, and offer something unique. Um, there's a lot of ex good examples of that locally. Um, Wisma in downtown Lake Bluff, they have this lounge area. You come in there, and do, it's, a, a very, it's probably the best convenience store <laughs> that you can visit. You think about how wonderful the environs are. You come in, there's, there's very often there's musicians playing in the corner. There's couches. People come in, have a glass of wine, pick up some food for the evening, and leave. Very lovely experience. Um, the new um, Lulu's uh, Frozen Delights, the new yogurt shop in Lake Bluff. Couches in the back. You go in there on the afternoon after school. You, first of all, you're lucky even getting in the door because of all the bicycles around, crowded from the high school kids and um, middle school kids that go and hang out there. But these are your new hangouts. People go and hang out. They use the, the Wi-Fi. They watch the, the large flat screen. It's, it's the new community hangouts. But maximizing the customer experience makes, uh, makes those customers come back and stay longer and spend more. You know, it's sort of ironic when you think about it is we used to have those hangouts for kids and we got rid of them all, but now we have hangouts for adults. Uh, it's much better for adults than kids, right? Yeah. Uh, Lake Bluff Brewery, good example of that one. Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> the brewery, this past summer, they decided, hey, they came to the village, can we maybe have block parties on an ongoing basis? The village trying to be in the business of saying, yes, it's sure. So we worked it out where it was cost neutral for the village. They came in, they set it up, they ran the block parties every third Friday. Phenomenal experience. Everybody uh, came out, had a great time. The weather was very cooperative this year. It was, it was a great customer experience. And they were rowdier than the kids are at the Lulu's. Absolutely. <laughs> How many people will visit the BMW tournament in September? All right. How many think 10,000? We got like, that's one. That's the Kylie Irene. family alone. Come on. Be, be proud of your decision, Irene. All right. How about 50? few more hands going up. How about 100? Okay, a few more. How about 125? And how about 200,000? Well, I hope you 200,000 are right, but right now projections are for 125,000 people. Um, and uh, it's interesting, though, and uh, if the uh, members of the Western Golf Association were here, they would probably tell you this that as many of you know it, it was held at Cog Hill for a number of years. Last year they went down to uh, Carmel, Indiana just outside of Indianapolis. This is the first time at Conway but really first time in Lake County in the North Shore area and they are extremely excited with pre-sales. Uh, they're very excited about the uh, hospitality tents and uh, there is some information in here if you're interested. Um, I'm sure uh, you know, Wind Trust or, or maybe uh, Lackey, uh, you might want to get a hospitality tent for all your clients uh, around the 18th green. Um, but it will be a spectacular event. There's going to be a lot of opportunities uh, for us to showcase our community. Uh, I might have to talk to Beacon Signs about some signs out on Route 60 that we can do uh, there. But uh, as we are hoping to not only bring them in by car, uh, and for those of you uh, that are worried about all the ta uh, traffic tie-ups, uh, the actual main parking lot is going to be in Matawa. We figured since they took Costco, it's the least we could do is put all the cars there. Um, but you might be familiar with Granger's uh, property, and actually it's an, technically an unincorporated Lake County because it's at the uh, uh, intersection of Everett and Riverwoods Road there. They have a very large vacant parcel there that most of the cars will be parked there. 
but we're also going to be working with Metra and Amtrak to bring people in by train, either through the uh, uh, downtown station or the Telegraph Road station, and getting people there. Uh, if you happen to be a BMW owner, uh, there will be special accommodations for you because you can drive your car there, park it, they'll wash it for you while you go to the tournament and uh, come back to a nice clean car. Uh, so some of you that are thinking of buying a new car between now and September, you might want to think about a BMW. There's some Canals. advantages there. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but it should be a, a wonderful opportunity, and we are working with uh, Lake County Visitors Bureau, and, and Susan Kelsey is working with a number uh, of businesses, and we'll be working closely with the Chamber as, as we get closer to the date to do certain things to, to capitalize on the fact that we're going to have all these new uh, visitors to town, maybe some will uh, like the community so much they'll want to buy a house there. Uh, we're looking for real estate for Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy right now, uh, and uh, we're very excited about this event uh, because this is uh, broadcast not just uh, nationally but internationally, and so we're really going to uh, have to put uh, our best face forward, uh, so to speak, in terms of displaying what our community is all about. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, thank you. Appreciate much. it.